Hello everyone and welcome to the finally blog. This is the blog that always executes. In today's video, we are going to cover a beginner's guide to Microsoft Agent Framework. If you have never used Semantic Kernel or Autogen Framework, don't let it stop you from leveraging this awesome framework by Microsoft to build intelligent AI apps. You will need some basic Python programming knowledge and some understanding on how REST APIs work to get started with today's session. At the end of today's session, you will have your local dev environment set up with Microsoft Agent Framework, and uh, we will execute one simple script to get your first agent up and running. So let's dive in. All right, let's get your local environment set up first. Links to all the resources that I'm going to talk about in this video are in the description. Now, Agent Framework supports both .NET as well as Python language. For this series, we will be going with the Python language. The first step here is to go to this link on GitHub that is for Agent Framework. This is a very active repository. Many amazing contributors are continuously improving it as we speak. Let me scroll down here and you will see a link here that will take you to the quick start guide. Let's open that. This is another fantastic resource. It has a quick start guide to ensure that you have all that is needed before getting started. So first let's select the Python programming language right here. And now let me scroll down. Uh, it has this prerequisite section. Let's get those installed first. Let's first start with Python. If you already have Python installed on your local machine, which matches this version requirement, that is 3.10 and above, then you can skip this chapter and go to the next chapter. So as soon as you click the link over here, it will show you all the versions of python if you don't already have this version installed then uh, you can download it right here now regarding python version the version that worked for me was an older version of python instead of latest version that is 3.13.8 so go ahead and install the required installer based on your operating system while installing make sure that you are checking the checkbox that says add to the path variable so that you don't have to manually do that later. Once the installer is done, you can verify that Python is successfully installed by opening the command prompt and entering the prompt for showing the Python version. Okay, now moving on to the next step. Here we need two things. The very first thing is Azure AI project and second is a deployed model. So if you already are familiar with both of this and you already have this available at your end, then you can skip this chapter and move to the next chapter. But I will dive into more details on how to set both of this for our friends who are exploring this for the very first time. <laughs> In order to get started with Azure AI project, let's first log in to portal.azure.com. Make sure that you have required access to create resources within this portal. And uh, once you are in this portal, let's start by creating a new resource group. Resource group helps you to combine all your common resources logically into one single bucket. Okay. Once you have created the resource group, let's go ahead and create a new Azure AI Foundry resource. Now, what is this Azure AI Foundry resource? In order to work with any of the AI capabilities within Azure, they provide two primary resource type. The very first type is Azure AI Foundry resource. So if you want to build, deploy, and manage generative AI models and application, including the agents, then you will select Azure AI Foundry resource, which we are going to do today. But if you are working with any sort of model fine tuning or any Azure ML capabilities, then you will go ahead with the Azure Hub resource. For now, we will go ahead with Azure Foundry resource. So on your resource group, click on create and search for Foundry. And create a new Foundry resource. Okay, now let's start adding value to create the new Foundry resource. Enter the name of Azure AI Foundry resource over here and make sure it's unique. 
enter the name of Azure AI project here. Now, this is the name that is being referred wherever we see the mention of Azure AI project. This is your logical bucket or container where all the development artifacts are bundled into one single project for ease of management of permission, monitoring, etc. So make sure that it's a meaningful name. And let's move to next screen. The identity section shows two options, system and system assigned and user assigned. Why this is important? Because this will help you to securely authenticate your application with Azure AI Foundry resource without you having to manually type in keys in any of your code. So let's keep this setting unchanged and rest of the setting unchanged. Once all the required validation is done and successful, you will see the create button enabled over here. Let's go ahead and create the resource. Once the resource creation is complete, go back to your resource group that you had created. Now you should see two resources here. One says Azure AI Foundry and second one for Azure AI Foundry project. This step takes care of our first half of our second pre-request. Now let's go ahead with creation of second half of this, that is deploying a model. For that, let's go back to the resource group that we had created and click on Azure AL Foundry. And let's launch the Foundry portal by clicking on this button. It will by default show the project associated to that Foundry resource. But you have if you have multiple projects created, then you can switch using this dropdown over here. So for creation of model, let's scroll down to a section called models and endpoints. This is the section where you will be able to see all the list of models that you have deployed. Let's go ahead and deploy a new GPT 4.1 model. Click on deploy model and deploy base model. Search for 4.1. And click on confirm. Leave all other settings unchanged and click on deploy. I already have the same model deploy. So this is how it will look like after the deployment is done. You can click on that model to see more details. In the model details page, you will see the endpoint URL, which is something you will frequently use in your code. If you want to test this model live, you can also open this model in playground. and enter your prompt in the window. It will give you the response based on your query. So this takes care of the second half of our second prerequisite that is deploying the model. Now let's take a look at step number three. This step is about installing Azure CLI, that is Azure Command Line Interface, which will be used for authentication. So when you are developing your program in your local, you will be logging using AZ Login so that you will have access to Azure AI project. Go ahead and click on this link. From this page, based on your operating system, you can install the respective version of Azure CLI. For me, this very same latest version worked. Once the installation is done successfully, you can verify the installation by opening a PowerShell window and typing the command AC login. This is the same command which is referenced over here. It will pop you for authentication. And once the authentication is successful, you should see your subscription name listed over here. Now we are back to our tutorials page. Uh, we have completed the installation of all three pre-requests. Now, if you scroll down a bit, you will see that we will need these two parameters throughout our development. One is the project endpoint and second is the AI model deployment name. To get the project endpoint, navigate to portal.azure.com and the resource group that you had previously created. From that, go to the Azure AI Foundry project and from the left hand navigation, go to endpoints and copy this API endpoint. This is something that you need to supply for the project endpoint parameter. And to get the model deployment name, again, go to the resource group. Now go to the Azure AI Foundry resource and launch the Foundry. And inside the Foundry, navigate to models and endpoint from left navigation and 
copy the deployment name for the model that you had just deployed. So GPT 4.1, this will be your model name. So now we have all that is needed to install the Microsoft Agent framework. Now let's jump into the code. Open your Microsoft Visual Studio code editor. You can find the link to download this from the description. Once you have installed the Visual Studio code, you can click on open folder and you can create a folder where your Python script will reside. So let me go ahead and create a new folder here. And, and select the folder. Okay, now the folder is ready and rendered on Visual Studio Code. Now we saw in the quick start article earlier that we need to use this to environment variable. So let's create a .env file where we will be storing these two variables. So click on new file and enter the file name .env. and select the path that we just created. And in this file, you can copy the two parameters along with the values that we had previously saved. You can copy this from this tutorial and you can copy the value that you had previously saved. All right, now in order to work with Python commands right from the Visual Studio Code editor, you can click you can click on the extension on your left hand side, search for Python extension and install the Python extension. Once the Python extension is installed, you can set up the interpreter. For that, you need to go to this global search bar on the top, click on show and run commands, click on select interpreter and then click on create virtual environment. Select all the configuration as per the description here and select the Python interpreter path. And you can see that it has started setting up the virtual environment. And once the environment is set up, you can activate it by entering this command in terminal and it will activate the virtual environment. Now you can execute your Python commands right from Visual Studio Code. Now let's go back to our GitHub repository. We will be using code from chat client module. I'll paste the entire link of this file in description. Now what this code does is it uses Azure AI agent client instance to pass the prompt to the LLM model and give the response back. Important thing to note here is it uses the function calling me mechanism. Now here what it is trying to do is it is trying to get weather for particular location but in real world you can replace it let's say with your db api that will give you the order status for a current order number so let's go ahead and let's copy this code to our interface you will notice that we have two imports over here one is azure ai agent client and second is azure cli credentials let's go back to our visual studio editor i'll create a new file over here i'll name it as demo.py for python file and save it in my current folder. Now, what I'll do is I'll copy the code as is from the GitHub repository. So here we have our code from GitHub repo. Next step is to install these three packages that will be needed to run the program. So let's first start by installing the identity package. You can do that by entering the command pip install Azure identity in terminal. It will start installing the identity package. After that is done, we will install the next package that is pydentic package. Uh, enter pip install pydentic, which is our package name, and uh, it will start installing the libraries. And finally, our agent framework package, which we can install by entering pip install agent dash framework with pre switch. So let's go ahead and install this. Now it will take one or two minutes to install this package. You can use this time to watch this cute panda eating bamboo, which is not a bad idea. 
or if you want to make productive use of your time, check out this super short video where I break down why agent framework is an absolute game changer and why everyone is talking about it. Either way, I'll see you in a few seconds when the installation is done. Okay, now the agent framework is successfully installed. Now let's start executing the code. We have to make few changes from the default code so that we can pass the variable that we had declared earlier. So for that, the very first thing we will need to do is we will import the OS package over here so that we can read that into environment variable. And in order to make that happen, we will install this additional package for reading the environment variable. Now let's call this function and assign the variables that we are reading from the environment files. So this two will be assigned to respective variables. Now we need to authenticate our code with the Azure AI project. So under main method, we will use this syntax that will help authenticate using the AZ login command. And then instead of using this signature we will designate a separate signature so that we can initialize the client with this variable so after authentication let's go ahead and add this block here so here essentially we are assigning the endpoint and the credential parameters let's make sure that indentation is correct and once that is done we do not need this signature because we have already declared our client so these are the changes that we need to do a quick recap we need to import os and the dot env libraries we need to call this function and we need to assign both the variables that we had declared in env file and then in main function we will use the authentication so that it can take the credential from easy login command and then we will initialize the client object We are now all set to execute our code. Let's first authenticate by using az login command to make sure that our credentials are validated. Once it's successful, you can just select your subscription and hit enter and you will be authenticated now you can execute your script using python and file name dot extension so python and demo dot py and you can see that this is the prompt that we had entered via prompt and here is the output that we got one change you can do here is you can see the response it is the response that is coming from this function instead of calling this function you can just assign none so that it will not call that function and you can notice the difference now in output if you run the script again so you can notice the difference in output over here it is showing the result directly from llm without any other further processing you can see the citation as is from the llm response all right that is it for today that is your super simple agent using agent tech framework you can go through the github repo there are many interesting sample you can try it out and you can extend it for your real world problem